Travis Van Goodsell. Apparently, my internet service decided to do a whatever check earlier this morning on all day of days. And so they were giving me grief and just went out as I brought up this <laughs> camera. <sighs> but it came back on, but it's still fluctuating. It's not functioning properly. They said on the phone that I need to do a power cycle. <sighs> Unbelievable. And you know who invests in my company, right? The church. And so, I was able to get some things done before I went running, so I do have time to waste. I do, just didn't want to waste it by not having internet access. Uh, so this is going to be the update of the lawsuit. I also have uh, uh, the key of translation necessary for the man like Moses, if you've been paying attention to my other videos. Uh, oh, there it goes out again. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's... Uh, uh, so I'm going to have to deal with that before I upload this video, because internet's down <laughs> unbelievable I already checked Judge Oberg did not file anything this morning or last night yesterday uh, and so there is no reason for them to shut me down right now around morning time after she gets to work yes but not now but I guess they're being prepared to make sure that it's shut down in advance. Uh, this brings up the other issue. I filed two filings two weeks ago. Uh, the one was on the Friday, so two weeks ago Friday. That was for disbarment and disciplinary action because I had enough. The uh, counsel for the the church was threatening my life during this lawsuit. Not just my life being threatened by the church previous to the lawsuit, which caused me to file the lawsuit, but during this lawsuit. I gave them the evidence of the eviction notice given to me by my landlord and by Percy, working together, conspiring that's the word that's used for conspiracies. More than one person involved in a crime. So all this talk from the news and in your own vocabulary of, oh, conspiracy theory is fake news. No. It's more than one person involved in a crime. That's a conspiracy. And the theory is what I did in assembling all of the evidence and presenting it to the court. And the reason why I could do that is because my initial complaint is a RICO conspiracy case. And so the actions taken against me that involved the church led to the crimes committed against me now. And so I was able to say, hey, the lawyers are not keeping their people in line during this lawsuit. And then there were other crimes that the church uh, had found out about the hearing with Judge First. That was way back last year, the original judge. She allowed my case to continue. She was assigned to this case after she'd been fired. She was recused from all her other cases, but then my case comes along and she's assigned my case specifically to 
dismiss it. And she had the hearing to dismiss my case. And I dropped a bombshell. I informed her that the church had been paying the person who had me disappeared back in 2008. The girls in the, in the audience who were there to, to view, I guess, whatever, uh, I don't know who they were or what they were doing there, but uh, gasps. <gasps> and the judge, taking notes, and then she said, okay, you have 30 days to refile an amended complaint. And so I did. But she still refused to give the order for service of process. And then I found out that the church was now trying to cover up the evidence that they had been paying that person in 2008. Wonder where they got that information from. <clears throat> they had not been served with papers. So as far as the church knew, there was no lawsuit. It's on the docket, yeah, but I had not been allowed to serve. <laughs> so they did not receive a filing yet. And yet here they were, already trying to cover up the evidence of the money trail. And so, then they try again to evict me. On Friday, March 13th. Now if you understand the case, if you understand real church history, which I have that playlist, real LDS history, you will understand exactly why. And I will be going over that in the Key of Translation video. Uh, if they shut me down while I'm trying to upload, I'm going to be pissed. <coughs> you know that's what they're doing. They are monitoring this to prevent me from any further filings. Because I dropped some bombshells yesterday. So, I wasn't planning on doing any videos, but like I said, I got stuff done early. <coughs> and uh, sure enough, my uh, ex who I emailed and said goodbye to, uh, all of a sudden I see this morning, she's got a whole bunch of panicked emails, call me, call me, call me. And so, yeah. <coughs> We're, I'm expecting, we're all expecting today for her to do something. But, uh, yeah, I turned it in and added it to the, the, uh, the motion for disbarment and disciplinary action against the defense counsel. Because they're involved in this. Whether they were directly or whether it's the company, Kirtland McCon Curtin McConkey. Somebody was stepping up and defending the church. And since these two guys are the ones who took up the, the cause for the church, they get to take the fall. <coughs> and uh, they purposely put in rookies. They didn't put in their best. They put in their best for Kay Burningham's case, Gaddy versus COP. They gave me their rookies the grunts and uh, and so uh, in the eviction uh, uh, it was started off on the Thursday Percy who had been informed to stay away from me leave me alone I'm not his client had done so for a year then all of a sudden, he comes knocking on my door, and I had to remind him, 
I'm not your client. I don't care. Are you threatening me? Yes, I am. Get out. No. I went and got my camera on my phone, recorded him. I did that video upload. You all saw it. And if you're saying, I didn't see it, this is the first time I've been to your channel. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but I recorded what I said. The next day, after 5 p.m., the landlord sends me an email eviction notice. She doesn't put it on the door. She sends it through an email claiming that uh, I had said that Percy was a black Muslim terrorist. I have the video proof I said no such thing. Did you see what they were trying to do? They were assisting the interference in my lawsuit. That's a crime. Serious crime. 20 years in prison. Federal prison. For interfering with a federal case. 20 years. No, oh, but this is their first offense. <laughs> yeah, they might get a lesser sentence. But that's how serious this is. And there they were. Katja. They are both included in my lawsuit, which had been served by that point. I finally found out I could do a waiver of summons. And so on February 27th, I did that video. I still have the receipts, of course. Got to have the evidence. And the judge, when she started to deny stuff, she was aware of the 27th of February filing, and yet still ignored that the defense counsel was late by 24 days. And I was pissed that she came after me for being late because the clerks failed to file it. Because the defense gets 30 days to respond to my initial complaint that gets served to them. That's why they had until March 30th, that Monday. I was planning on going in on the 31st to have them enter in the entry of default. Coronavirus. Save the day. For them. But they got served. And two weeks later, I'm being given an eviction notice? Huh. On Friday the 13th. Which means it's premeditated. If you do not understand Friday the 13th and the symbolism of that day in connection with LDS church history, Yes, Friday the 13th and the church have a bond. And so, I then submitted, two weeks ago Friday, the motion for disbarment and disciplinary action. Including the judge's nonsense exposing that she knew and didn't do her job. And that became part of the final judgment as well. That was submitted on that, fr uh, that Sunday after the Friday's filing of the disbarment. And so, uh, there we go. I submitted those two. 
and I did the video where I was shocked come Monday morning. The clerks immediately responded, they filed it, they filed it in accordance with when I filed it through the email system. Not like they did previously by waiting until the Monday. The church went into silence. We found out yesterday that, uh, which was actually on Wednesday night when they reported it, that Elder Holland, after they would have received those filings, got ill. But they claim it's not coronavirus. Immediately after they would have been notified by the council of what I filed over the weekend. And the church went silent. They weren't posting daily like they normally were. Then come Friday, Judge Oberg doesn't do anything. They're back to final or they're back to posting. They allow missionaries back. They canceled the second coming. <laughs> I did those videos. And Judge Oberg goes silent. She's no longer rushing to dismiss my motions. It's now two weeks. We're all waiting for her. The fate of the church and me are in the balance. Like I said, I lose, I die. They may try to have me uh, picked up and disappeared again so that I'll be in a torture chamber an isolation torture chamber away from everybody for the rest of my life. Which, as we're in the end of the world, may not be for too long, but my life is in great danger right now. My life is in Oberg's hands. As her career and life are based on her decision right now. Judge First chose to save her life. She ran away. And they purposely put in Oberg to dismiss my case. And she was starting to comply, but I called her on it that Sunday. You can't do what she's been doing. Because that's interference, also. She's supposed to be impartial. Even the councils are supposed to be impartial. Defense counsel, it's not so that you can lie and cheat to the court and see what you can get away with to get your client off. It's to make sure that the prosecution does their job correctly. If the client is guilty, all you're doing is making sure that the due process is served in the whole court process to a trial. You're not even supposed to plead. You're supposed to go to trial for every accusation. And likewise, for prosecution attorneys, all victims are to be given free counsel from the state. They're supposed to do your case. But we have not been following the Constitution. We have not been following the laws of the land. And instead, they've created a whole new system that is completely foreign to the Constitution. See, now, the states can say, no, nah, we're not taking the case. Screw you. And so, the person then has to file on their own if they can't afford an attorney. But, it can't be for criminal anymore. It's now for civil. 
for money damages. That's my situation. Nobody in the state, nobody in the federal government would take my case. And so I had to do it myself. And because of my poverty, I can't afford a lawyer. Thousand dollars an hour. And so yes, I've had to learn the processes. Without getting an education, without getting a law degree, without passing the bar. See, I'm on a lower standing. Counselors and judges are on a higher bar. And this is what I'm going up against. But, Oberg is supposed to, after assigning me the victory, because 24 days late is an automatic loss. It's in the books. It's not complicated. All she has to do, 24 days late, case for the plaintiff. Then, she's required by the law for RICO cases to get the Utah U.S. Attorney General. Not Sean Reyes, that's the State Attorney General. The U.S. Utah Attorney General. To proceed with charges, criminal charges, against the church, and all in the complaint. Who aided and abetted the church. <clears throat> That's the law. But we have strayed so far from the Constitution that that mentality has also caused lawyers and judges to reinterpret the laws that have been added since the Constitution in the same manner in which they interpret the Constitution is the same way they interpret the laws. To twist it to be biased rather than blindfolded like Lady Justice. And that's the struggle I'm dealing with. This is the Goliath that I have to climb. And they're a trillion dollar company that have power and influence over every aspect of my life. They will not leave me alone. That's why they weren't going to settle with me. This is for everything. One of us is going down. And the odds are against me. That's why I said my goodbyes last night. That's why I'm still getting hassled. Because they will not let me go. They will not play fair in this court case. It's because they're guilty. If they were innocent, why would this be happening? Why would I be given a death threat? Why would they try to cover up the money trail? Because they're guilty. This is what guilty people do. They make mistakes by covering it up. And so, yes, when I filed the eviction notice that these guys were involved in it, that the lawyers are responsible for everyone involved in the case, I was also doing a theory test to find out if indeed they were involved. And sure enough, as is the pattern that I've been witnessing this whole time, they fell for it also. The clerks fell for it by filing correctly that Monday morning. They exposed themselves as having been guilty and I did the videos 
Percy shows up that Monday, stays for a shift. He then comes back on Wednesday, stays for a partial shift. And I'm going, why is it a partial shift? That's interesting. Why is he leaving early? He didn't come back at all that week. This week, he didn't stay for a shift at all. Because I remember Monday. Huh, no Percy today. I wonder what's going on. I thought they were increasing his hours. I only saw him on Wednesday to pick up some of the other tenants for grocery shopping, as he does anyway. And so he, likewise, confirmed. Not proven, confirmed that they informed him back off confessing that they did plan and plot this that the lawyers do have access to these people I, man, I don't know if I can trust the internet link but we'll try it I still have to save this, so we'll see. Uh, I might have to uh, wait and do a reboot of the whole system. So we'll see. 